Hey everyone, Eric here from Iowa Robot Fighting. So when this video goes out to everybody, we will be on our way to the WRC in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So there's a lot going on with that. Uh, we spent the last geez, four weeks uh, working on our robots. I specifically have spent over a hundred hours working on my latest bot. And without further ado, say hello to Bad Touch, my latest and greatest bot. So as you can tell, it is a ver uh, horizontal spinner design, just like uh, Cowboy was. Uh, it still uses a similar wheel type. However, I will go more in depth uh, into this build later in this video. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to get into uh, some of our other robots because Evan has one and I have another that uh, competed in the Minneapolis competition last year uh, that our friend Ivan used during the competition to test it out. Um, and then I'll go into why I swapped away from Cowboy. Okay, so first up. Maelstrom, Evan's latest robot. I don't have much on this robot for uh, photography. However, I do have this run-up test. And from what you could see in the test, uh, it is very similar to his previous designs. However, he is using a UHMW frame, uh, which also doubles as his armor. Similar to his previous designs like Horns of Jericho uh, and also similar to Bad Touch, now in its uh, current design. However, he's sticking with the externally mounted uh, weapon motor with attached weapon, but he went ahead and got the FingerTech uh, asymmetrical titanium weapon. So it should be pre-balanced, should have everything it needs. The spin-up test was very conclusive that it, it should work exactly as, um, as advertised. So that looks great. The other one, is what the deuce or deuce as we call it this originally started its life as a test bot it is a uhmw solid block uh, that we milled out to create a uh, a solid body design with internal based wheels the potential to run on its roof but really doesn't and then uh covered in a an aluminum or uh, steel armor. Now that armor really doesn't do much. The UHMW itself uh, is perfectly fine for uh, keeping uh, the internal safe and maintaining its capability of fighting. However, it is just a control bot and it start, like I said, it started off as just a test bot for us to be able to test out the milling, see what it was going to take but we went ahead and had Ivan run this at the competition and we had a handful of issues. The motors that we had bought ended up being different RPM levels um, and it was really difficult to control, really slow because of some of the motors that actually were paired up were only like 30 RPM motors, so it just crawled along. Um, but it's extremely durable. And uh, there are several people at uh, uh, the MRCA who are begging me to enter this one into the competition. And if I do, uh, it will likely be driven by my son, Damien. So we will see uh, if I can get enough put together for this one to be able to compete uh, at the WRC. Uh, but as you can tell from the videos, uh, it is does okay but needs some modifications uh and we're going to run it as is mostly as a training bot for damien if we can get it up and running so on to the main reason why cowboy is done so the latest version of cowboy was put together as a aluminum body uh, chassis. Now, this chassis was not anything more than sheet metal, and it was actually able to be twisted. It wasn't as rigid as it needed to be. Uh, it didn't work as well as anticipated, 
And during the first fight, as you can see here, the control was just not there. I ended up winning this fight, but it wasn't anywhere near the uh, level of control that I came to expect of even the early cowboy designs. Later on, I had another fight against uh, Adama, I believe is what the, what the name of the bot is. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Adama was a high energy vertical spinner, which tends to be the bane of my existence. And as you can see, he tossed me around quite a lot and then ended up pinning me against the wall and tearing a rent in the bottom of my robot. As you can see right here, he tore so much out of it that he actually made it possible that I got high sided on my own chassis. And because of that, uh, I wasn't able to control anymore. He ended up blowing my wheel off and that was it. So I was hoping that was a fluke. I was hoping that was the, that was the end of it, but I was pretty certain that Cowboy was done uh, after this competition. So I ended up going up against uh, Little Twisty. Little Twisty uh, had been uh, really strong throughout the entire season. And uh, we dove into it with the understanding that if I ended up getting my armor ripped off at all, then the fight was over. There was no way I was going to win it. And of course, right off the bat, blasted my armor right off, spilling the guts of the robot out. And um, because of that, uh, they thought that the fight should have been over because they thought my battery had been spilled out, which if a battery is on the floor and gets hit, it's lithium, it can explode. So uh, they tried to call the match, as you can see the KO that they put up. I called for the continuation of the fight, letting them know that was my ESC and not my battery. And they continued the fight because why call the fight? It was my last fight of the day. I wasn't keeping the robot. Let's just go. So Little Twisty just ripped my robot to shreds. And this was the fight where I earned the most destroyed award. Again, not my proudest moment as a builder, but definitely my proudest moment as a robot driver and entertainer. It was fun to watch my, watch my less, than, less than average robot get absolutely decimated. It was very cathartic. Um, and that was the end. That was the end of Cowboy. Um, I started reworking the idea, and last week I showed you guys uh, the concept behind the Brazilian Drive, uh, which... Uh, is based on the Brazilian drive system for moving a robot instead being used for uh, my weapon. So let's dive straight into that. Testing of the Brazilian drive went perfectly, perfectly well. Everything uh, looked good. It was able to deflect hits just fine. It was stable. Um, so the Brazilian driven weapon works as expected. So then I needed to move on to what I was going to attach that weapon to. Knowing the rigidity issue of the previous version of Cowboy, uh, I decided to go ahead and use aluminum bar stock this time. So this is what Cowboy was made of the last time. Bad Touch, however, is made of this aluminum bar stock, which is so much more rigid and stable. This is a drive section which gets attached to my weapon arm. Weapon arm gets slotted in underneath that. And that is the primary T chassis of Bad Touch. Um, I then went ahead and decided we should do better motors. So the previous motor were the, was these N20s. Super light, relatively effective but way too underpowered for what we were going for. So instead, we upgraded to Silver Sparks. And you can tell just by the size difference, they're significantly better. Increased power, and as you'll see in a couple of videos here in a second, that this motor has a lot better control because of its increased torque. So then we went ahead and put together new hubs. So the old plastic hubs 
are far too fragile. So I moved on to creating aluminum hubs, which then the wheels are actually secured to via super glue. And then for rigidity's sake, so as you can see, this is a non-treated wheel. You can see how much that bends. Very little force is needed to bend that, so it wants to flex. After treating the wheel, it does not want to flex. What I did was I coated this. It doesn't look pretty, but it works. The, this increases the rigidity of the wheel by, and still maintains the high friction that the wheel has from it being neoprene rather than foam. Um, so this might stand up to a little bit more punishment, but other than that, it won't warp in a turn uh, or be likely to come off the rim fingers crossed. Um, but that mixed with uh, the new motor should give me a lot better drive capability on this system. So that all being put together, I then moved on to testing uh, the drive and the weapon together. And as you can see, it has a lot better control and the weapon doesn't disrupt the movement of the, uh, of the robot in general. But the one thing I noticed from the test was the fact that the weapon was sitting, the, the impact angle of the weapon was far too high. It was a little over an inch off of the deck, which is not going to be good when it comes to some of these bots that are exactly an inch or smaller. I've seen one that's less than three quarters of an inch tall as a control bot. I want to be able to hit that robot. Now with the, with the way that the wheels are set up and everything, I'm unlikely to have any sort of issues with control bots uh, because it's just a tall robot. Um, if they get under me, as long as they don't pop me up and sit me on top of them, there's a possibility I can still drive off them. So no big deal, but I'd much rather do damage to them. So I ended up uh, angling the weapon arm, as you can see here. So this is the new weapon arm versus the test weapon arm. And this was hodgepodge together, which is flat. And this one here has a mild angle to it. And you can see when I set them, set them down here, let me see if I've got a piece of anything to tilt. Let's use the pencil. Okay, so with the pencil here, you can see that this runs flat and this runs at a slight angle. The distance here is just over half an inch. That is perfect for hitting just about any robot that enters the arena. The other issue that I had with Cowboy's weapon is the fact that the weapon bar was attached directly to the motor. So the major difference there is size. You can see right here the difference in diameter between a typical motor drive shaft and the new drive shaft of my uh, Brazilian drive weapon. So that is much less likely to snap on impact with a vert spinner. Uh, will it? Bend, possibly, but hopefully it won't snap because this is high carbon steel, this is aluminum. Aluminum tends to bend and possibly rip, but it's unlikely at this diameter with the forces that we're looking at. So in addition to the weapon arm, I included a plow shape to be added on to the front. Now, the reason this is, is because I have a very vulnerable drive wheel for my weapon here. And I don't want that to get chewed into by a vertical spinner or even horizontal spinner. So this will allow me to potentially deflect incoming uh, opponents and allow me to defend against it while my weapon is spun down or if they somehow get in between or get alongside me or for some reason my weapon uh, gets deflected away but they still are able to get through, 
uh, hopefully that plow will help things. The one thing you'll notice compared to the original cowboy design is that cowboy with its all-encompassing wheel guards and front plate that it had, um, bad touch is extremely open. So this is very offense-minded. This was a mix of philosophies. The plan was to give a nice all-around bot that was capable of deflecting a hit and also potentially dealing out damage. And what it ended up being was bad at both. It, and the changes that I made were too little and what I expected was way too much. So now, I'm hoping this isn't true, but I believe this one might be a glass cannon with the amount of damage that it should be able to dish out and the durability of the weapon itself, that portion of the robot is sound. Everything else is very lean. There is, There are plenty of opportunities for opponents to do damage. However, with the increased uh, drive capability between the wheels, the motor, and the ESC that I brought in after the fact, which is a twin ESC, this has a lot better control, so hopefully I'll be able to avoid and deflect with my weapon and with my spikes here out the back, which if I face my, my back towards the opponent, they're less likely to get access to my wheels. They might chew into the rear of my robot, which is 16th inch aluminum, uh, but isn't the super thin aluminum sheet metal that uh, the original cowboy was. So with the plow and the spikes, those are my only defensive capabilities on this robot. So after I designed the prototype, from what you can see uh, in the testing phase here and the photos seen here, I moved on to mass production. Um, I needed to produce a lot of components, many of which uh, just fill that box there. <laughs> Uh, and consist of a handful of wheels, but I was able to modify two existing weapons from Cowboy, uh, which I then mounted on uh, using a similar hub system uh, for the wheels. It's just an aluminum block that uh, the weapon is screwed into. I went ahead and painted uh, the uh, high carbon steel uh, blades that are donated from Cowboy. Um, so I have two weapons just in case one fails. It's possible that I could have a catastrophic uh, failure of a weapon uh, due to the fact that I had to drill uh, these blades out, which took a significant amount of time. Uh, you can see this high speed <laughs> sped up footage here. Uh, this is a 40 minute drilling process just to get a hole big enough in the high carbon steel to be able to run the axle through. That doesn't include the holes necessary to mount the, um, the actual weapon to the block. Um, then I moved on to painting. Uh, like I said, I painted the, the high carbon steel blades and all of my components that are primary components are all painted the red and black, uh, color scheme and uh, I went ahead and did some cricket finals on the backs of all of my armor belts uh, for the name of the robot but uh, that all in all is uh, is it I went ahead and pulled the prototype uh, pieces left those as spares and did a final assembly which the final assembly took a significant amount of time I've got the sped up time lapse here that you can see but the majority of the final assembly is assembling the chassis in and of itself. Putting the electronics in it is a small portion uh, and mounting the motors is a slightly more difficult section. So that's why I've officially prepared two separate chassis pre-done for me to be able to fight. And if one gets destroyed, I have another one ready. I, I plan to run some cameras and audio at uh, the WRC this weekend uh, to be able to show everybody what it's like at a competition, 
uh, what you can expect uh, if you attend one. And also, uh, you should see our kind of process. So my plan, like I had at the, at the uh, Minnesota competition this last time, is to always have a backup robot ready within about 60 seconds of preparation. Battery charged, wheels off, and, um, and weapon wheel off because the compression on these can actually damage them and create a flat part of the, of the wheel that'll cause issues with the weapon spin up or drive depending on which it is but i'll always have a spare chassis ready i'll always have two robots ready to go and if i don't if one gets destroyed and i have to have the other one ready you'll see me start to build a new chassis from spare parts uh, at that moment so that being said potentially at least two robots if not three this time around um I'm really looking forward to this competition. Everybody seems really psyched about it. It's the first of the MRCA qualifiers of this year, and I am hoping to get at least into the top eight this time around, uh, but that's going to require some lucky draws and, because this is the first time I'm running bad touch, and it's possible that it has some significant drawbacks that I'm not foreseeing right now, which is the whole point of going to the competition. So. You guys be safe out there. I will catch you next time.